Today we'll be working on the Kasselmeyer blood test. This is a presumptive test for blood, which means that it will determine whether something is or is not blood, but it's not a confirmatory test. What it can do really well is tell you when something is not blood, and then if it, just, if it tests positive, then you would proceed with your other protocols, you know, doing a confirmatory test of some kind. So the chemicals we're using today are our first water, uh, which is gonna moisten our swab so we can actually get a sample of our material. Um, we're using alcohol, and alcohol is like a solvent, it's a polar solvent, and it's gonna help to bring the, bring the stain up to the edges of the, of the fibers of the Q-tip. We have a, a solution of phenolphthalein, and this one is prepared uh, with, with uh, minerals, so that's why it's yellow. Phenolphthalein is a color indicator, meaning that it'll switch color in the presence of a base. So what this will test for is that oxidation reaction of the final product, which is the hydrogen peroxide. So you might know that blood bubbles when it's with hydrogen peroxide, you know how it bubbles on a cut, bubbles on a wound, something like that. Well, that is an, that's an oxidation re reaction. It produces some um, oxygen gas. But in the present, when, uh, when the phenolphthalein, sorry, my bad, when the peroxide breaks down and it releases oxygen atoms, if in the presence of this color indicator, that it'll flip this color, that's the chemical reaction that we're gonna look for instead of the production of gas bubbles. So therefore, we need a very small quantity of material. So I have my cotton swab, and I'm gonna moisten it with water. Um, it is important to let the drops fall through the air so that you're never touching the bottle tip to, uh, to your sample. Now we're gonna do both a positive and negative test for this one. That means I'm gonna um, prepare both sides. One is gonna get a sample of blood and one side is gonna get nothing because I wanna see what all the colors are of just the reagents. So for the positive test, I have some blood soaked paper. Um, this is actually a sample of animal blood. Um, soaked in the paper. I'm just going to touch a little bit to the to the Q-tip. Okay, now I can barely see anything. It just looks like a little stain. So um, that side has blood on it and this side has nothing. We're going to do the, the chemicals in the order indicated. So there was water and then we, we took a sample. When I open up my bottle, please avoid contamination. So you can leave it in your hand like this and or if you do put it down then put it capside up so that it doesn't get contaminated i'm going to add a drop of alcohol two drops looks good to me today and I'm gonna, everything goes the same on both sides the only difference in my q-tip is that one has the sample and one doesn't that's a positive and a negative control okay. here's my next chemical this is the I got two. This is a phenolphthalein I meant. Okay. Follow, it has to fall through the air to avoid contamination. Now at this point, you want to look for a false negative. If it were to turn pink here, that would be a false negative because the chemical reaction we're looking for is actually with the hydrogen peroxide. So if you did get a chemical reaction, that would be, that would be a false positive. So now that we'll add the, the hydrogen peroxide. and then we'll give this a little time to develop. And you might be able to see it developing already. See how it's pink right here? This is the side that is positive. And then the other side is my negative control. But what I can see from here, the reason I would do this, is that it looks kind of yellowish, you know? Maybe after you picked up a, a different sample later on, you are being like, ooh, it's a little yellow. Maybe that's the blood. Nope, that's just the chemical. So I'm gonna drop this onto my paper towel. I'm gonna to use a Sharpie and I'm gonna write positive and negative control on my paper towel. Now that I have my positive and negative control ready and I can see what the colors are supposed to look like when the test is working, now I want you to test a, um, another negative control I'm gonna have you test something that you know for sure is not blood. So I've got a sample of ketchup in here. Ketchup is red and so is blood. 
So how, well, a smart person might ask, how do you know that that's not pink? Because the thing that you tested was red. Blood is red, and when you dilute red, don't you get pink? So we want to test something else that is red, but we want to know like what is what is the redness, what is the the uh, the color of the material have to do with the test itself? Okay, so let's uh let's use water first, and then I'll take a sample of my ketchup. It looks reddish brown. It's when it's when ketchup is red. Gosh, it looks like blood, or rather blood looks like ketchup. So now let's put them in the same order as before. The ethyl alcohol it falls through the air to avoid contamination. Phenolphthalein is, is next. Okay, and that's the yellow one. And I, I look for, for a false positive here. All it does is look like the stain and I see the yellow. Here goes the hydrogen peroxide. And we'll let this develop a little bit. Now what I notice is that I can see where the stain is because I got some ketchup on it. And I can see the yellow color from the phenolphthalein and it does not look anything at all like the positive control. This is called a negative control. I tested it with something that could possibly throw me off you know, in later testing, I want to know what it looks like with something that is red. I'm going to um, put this one down on my paper towel and I'm going to label this one my negative control. The reason I'd want to do both a positive and a negative control is to see what it's supposed to look like when, when it is blood and also when it isn't blood. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's test some unknowns. Things that are sometimes dried and they might look like blood. This is a, a piece of fabric that's got a stain on it that looks kind of yellowish. Could this be blood? How about this one that looks kind of brown and it looks like something spilled onto this piece of fabric. And this one's kind of fun. This was from a, another student last semester who's, who wanted to test their own blood. And so there was a scab or something and they, they like put the blood from their scab on here and I told them to label it human blood. I wonder if this one will test positive. It's kind of, it's a couple months old now. And I have another one with a messy stuff on the inside of this food container. And I've labeled this one as an unknown also. Let's see what we get. So um, for, for the test, we're always gonna start with water. And then you're gonna take a sample of the material. And it goes in the same order alcohol, phenolphthalein, please avoid contamination, look for false positive after this one, and then the hydrogen peroxide. And then give it a few moments to develop. I'm going to pause the video and do a few of these and then you can take data and determine which ones are blood. So the my results came out okay. Not bad at all. Um, the, I tested a meat tray because the Crons had tacos last night. So I tested the meat tray and <laughs> take a look at this. Now the differences in shade could very well be from uh, different amounts of blood that got onto the Q-tip. It could uh, be the time of development. After a few minutes, um, the, the color is no longer reliable. So you wanna look for the color change after 30 seconds to a minute is all. Okay, hope that was helpful.